doing YouTube? This Skip coming to you live, straight out of Real Six Aquatic Kennels. Today's video topic: We're going to discuss the transferring of genetic characteristics and traits from sickly parents to their offspring. And the main two genetic traits that I want to focus on are recessive traits and hereditary traits. But before I get into this, I want to give you guys a brief description of hereditary traits so that we all can have an understanding and I can move swiftly through this video and make it as short as possible. So check this clip out. definition of hereditary trait, let's discuss both hereditary trait and recessive trait. Right before you are my reverse orange Bob Midas offspring. Now for the past few years, I have been working on isolating a certain recessive trait when it comes to this particular species of Midas, Centronellus. I have orange Midas that during their breeding dress, during, during the times of breeding or when they're stressed, they display their reverse orange bars. But it's only during those times. And that is what we call a recessive trait. It's not a hereditary trait. I'm going to break it down. We're going to get into it. So we can truly understand the difference between the two. So, for the past few years, I have been working on isolating that particular recessive trait and turning the genetic genomes into a dominant recessive trait and then in turn create a hereditary trait through generations. These are third generation reverse orange bar Midas cichlids and hopefully this generation will prove to have the hereditary trait that I'm looking for. The one thing I mentioned to you guys before in my previous videos, you have to have patience. When you're a master breeder, your most effective tool is patience. They say it's not going to happen overnight. So with that said, let's check out this short clip, this short video clip of the definition of recessive trait. Check this out. Of 
heredity of all organisms is called a gene, and it can have many different versions called alleles. Normally, individuals have two alleles for one gene. A dominant allele is usually designated by an uppercase letter and masks the effects of another allele, the recessive allele. Recessive alleles are normally represented by lowercase letters and is, as you can no doubt guess, the non-dominant allele. If an individual has the same two alleles for a gene, this is called homozygous. If an individual has two different alleles for a gene, this is called heterozygous. The combination of alleles an individual inherits is called the genotype. What that individual actually looks like is called the phenotype. A recessive trait is the phenotype that is seen only when a homozygous recessive genotype for the trait of interest is present. This means that an individual must have two recessive alleles for the gene that determines this trait of interest. Wasn't that quite interesting? So let me sum it up for you guys as we check out my male reverse orange Bob Midas who is now out of his breeding dress I removed the female from this tank he no longer had fry in this tank you've seen him in a previous video the proof is in the pudding check out my previous video and you'll see that he had bars vertical bars going up and down his body but as you see now he's not displaying those bars that's because it's a recessive trait a recessive trait is a non-aggressive trait and what I mean by aggressive it doesn't always show itself it's sometimes it is show itself during stressful times it may appear during mating time when it comes down to these sickness now on the other hand hereditary traits are just the opposite it's aggressive it always show itself like this red head is leaders his bars never go away because it's hereditary And speaking of hereditary and recessive trait, it reminds me, some years back, there were a few guys on the internet, they were discussing my pyro trimax and the little black slit that sometimes appear on my males, my male trimax. It's a little slit in the dorsal fin. That is what we call a genetic marker. I put that marker in my genetic gene pool because sometimes some people like to say, oh yeah, we, we bred this fish and it looks, it's compatible to yours and it rivals yours. And a lot of times all they did was get their buddies or their friends or order some pyros from me and integrated my pyro genetics in their bloodline and now they're so-called competitive. You, you're just using my genes. You can't, you can't outdo me with my own genetics. And, a lot, and trust me people, a lot of distributors, especially on the East Coast, Trimax have my pyro genes in them. I've been breeding them for over 20 years and I've sold thousands of them. And you have to know, out of all those thousands, where do they end up at? Who has them? Who's breeding them? Beg the question, huh? So in closing, Let's recap and make sure that we all have a greater understanding of recessive and hereditary traits. Let me give you one last example. You see that black in Ms. Kaya's 
dorsal fin, that black blotch, that is a hereditary trait because it's aggressive, it's non-passive, it's always there. You always see it when you see her. The black slit that shows up in my male pyro. is also hereditary because it always shows it doesn't go away it doesn't just show when he's breeding or when my males are breeding it's always in the dorsal fin just like the females black blotch is always showing in her dorsal fin just like Female festes always have black in their dorsal fin. But on some occasions, you may get a male with the same black markings in his dorsal fin when you're talking about the feste. It's rare, but it does happen sometimes. Depending on the bloodline or the lineage of that feste. But with these pyros, it's no coincidence when you see a black slit in their dorsal fin. It's a genetic marker that I placed there years ago to help me recognize when someone else has incorporated or integrated my bloodline in theirs. Now, Miss Kaya is getting ready to fill up with eggs again so she can spawn once again. So she's displaying bars, vertical bars going down her body. That's a recessive trait. She doesn't always display those bars, only when breeding, just like I mentioned with my reverse orange barb mitis. She normally looks like this guy. Capone. Check him out. So I hope you guys understood the terms and definitions that we utilize today. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, and next time it's going to be a whopper, people. Trust me. I got some new and fun topics to discuss. This skip.